So now that you've saved the file and closed the file, we're going to go back to Photopia, which you can also get to by opening up another tab and typing in photopia.com. Since we saved this file to our computer, we can go File, Open, and the file should be in our Downloads folder. It's the one that's labeled PSD. PSD stands for Photoshop Document. So I'm going to double click this. I've got the background layer, which is the original scan. And I've got layer one, which is the black portions only of that first scan. I want to change the name of this to ink by double clicking where it says layer one and typing in ink. I want to create two more background layers, actually one background layer and one color layer. So I'm going to click one time on the background layer. Down here at the bottom, I'm going to click new layer. Notice how whenever you roll your mouse over these things, a little thing pops up and tells you what it is. So in this case, I'm going to do a new layer. I'm going to double click this and call this white back. and hit the enter key. What I want to do is make this white background layer behind the ink layer so that I can see, I don't want to see these uh, transparencies. So while I have this selected, I'm going to go to the edit menu Go down to Fill. These are my two paint swatches over here. This one's the foreground color. You can tell because it's in the front of this one. And this is the background color. So I'm going to change the Fill menu to Background and click OK. And now I've got a white layer that I can now color in front of. Before I color anything though, I'm going to create another layer and double click this one and call it color, C-O-L-O-R. This is the layer that I want to do all of my color in. Now let me warn you, this is where a lot of people go wrong and this is something that I'm going to be grading on as to whether or not you're following the directions. Only color on the color layer. To begin with, I'm going to click this top foreground color swatch, color swatch, and change the color. You can move this up and down over here on the right, but to actually select the color, you have to click in here. And notice how this is the color that it was previous, this light green. Now it's the light, the, the lighter blue. If I want a little bit darker blue, I can just pull this down or click down here and click OK. Now I'm ready to paint. I'm going to use the brush. This little tiny brush needs to be larger, otherwise it's going to take a really long time to color this. On the keyboard of your laptop, Click the right bracket tool, which is right underneath the backspace tool at the top right hand corner of your keyboard. And as you click or tap the right hand bracket, the brush gets bigger so that when you paint, it's painting with a large brush. If you want to get in tight spaces, like right here, tap the left bracket and make it smaller. If you make a mistake, you can go to the eraser tool here. Again, it's a really small eraser right now. It'll take you forever to erase that. So again, I'm going to tap on the right bracket tool. 
and erase that line. So this is how you color. One of the nice things about this layering effect is that if I make a mistake, it's not going to color the black layer. The black layer is going to be left alone. So you don't have to worry about that. But again, if you want to fix your mistake, choose the eraser tool and erase that color. So play around with this for a little bit. Play with some of the other tools. Just noticed something that's missing. Somehow a little line got pulled out of this one. I must have made a mistake there. I can fix that later. So again, just play around with this. You can change the tone of the face. Lighten it up quite a bit. Make it a little warmer by going up the palette like this. And then you can come in here and make sure that you have the brush tool and paint the face a different color. That's a little bit too much pink, but I'm going to leave it for now because there's ways to fix one color across the whole board at the same time, which I'll show you later. But for now, just play around with this. And always save your work. One other thing you want to notice is that these things also have keyboard shortcuts. So for instance, the eraser tool is the letter E on your keyboard. The brush tool is the letter B. You can see that in this little dialog box that pops up when you roll over a tool. So if I'm over here working with the brush tool and I make a mistake, I can tap the letter E on my keyboard and it turns into the eraser and now I can erase. While you're painting, you're going to use these two keys quite a bit. So I'm going to tap the B. Paint it that color. Since I don't want the eyes that color, I'm going to tap the E, make my brush smaller by tapping on the left bracket and erasing that color. As you finish your work every day, make sure to go to File, Save as PSD, and then save it in your Downloads folder. Notice it'll say this dialog box will pop up. Do I want to replace it? Yes. I want to replace it with the new one. So you, you can actually make multiple variations of your images and I'll show you how to do that later too. But basically with that file save as feature, save as PSD feature, you can always have the newest file saved on your computer and then you can work on it from any computer that has internet access on photopia.com.